Hello, welcome to the English with Colin podcast. My name is Colin. I'm Susanna. And today we have a very special episode. This is the end of our Japan series. We've done over 40 episodes about our experiences in Japan.、Mm -hmm. And this is to kind of mark the end of that because we are no longer in Japan. If you've watched some of my other videos, you might know where I am. Um, if not, we will reveal that、uh, a little bit later. But today is the chance just to put a final、um, end to our content about Japan because we won't be posting content about Japan、uh, in the future, or certainly we don't have plans to. So let's start with a little bit of a reflection on our time. In Japan, favorite experiences? Favorite experiences in Japan? Where would you like to start with that? Traveling around with Japan was、um, one of the favorite things to do.、Um, well, when you live and work there, you need to remember that there's a whole country to discover.、Mm. And that, yeah, one of the best experiences was just getting out, either if it was a road trip or train. Or a flight, you know,、mm -hmm. somewhere within Japan. That was really nice. I think it's very easy, especially when you're living in Tokyo, to forget that there is so much more to the whole country. Yeah, and so different、um, as well. It can be quite expensive to travel. True. You know, if you want to, to go a long distance away from Tokyo, it can be expensive. Sometimes it can be cheaper just to get on a plane and go to Thailand or Vietnam. So,、um, Doing a long trip in Japan could be quite expensive.、Um, any, any trips that come to mind? Well, the last time we went to Kyoto was very, very nice because I hadn't been there for autumn leaves. And、wow. that was quite an experience. And it was also very quiet when we were there. Yeah, the last time we went to Kyoto, it was quiet because it was the pandemic. And during the pandemic, for a couple of years, if not more, Japan was closed to tourists. So there were no inbound tourists.、Uh, and also, not too many Japanese people were traveling for tourism. No.、Um, so we were in Kyoto for the changing of the, the leaves. And We felt like we had the city to ourselves. It was so quiet.、Um, at a time which is really the busiest time for tourists, I think,、uh, in Kyoto, you know, when the, when the leaves change. So that's certainly something that will never happen again, unless there's another pandemic. To have the city at that time of year just to, what felt like just to ourselves.、Um, So that was definitely a special. Yeah, we、trip. timed it quite well because、um, there was no、um, ban on traveling at that time, but it was only for a few days before we traveled.、Um, mm -hmm. So no one was, had really made any arrangements to travel. So it, it, was, it was quite nice. Everything was open,、uh, everything was very quiet,、um, people were lovely. So yeah, we had a great time. Hotels were cheap. It was very cheap, yeah. <laughs>、um, surprisingly, unsurprisingly.、Um, and another, I mean, traveling is obviously a big thing. Food is a big thing.、Um, I had some amazing、uh, meals. One that I was thinking about when I was thinking about what we could、uh, talk about today was the, the food festival that. They held in Tokyo Dome. Yes, this is January, right? January, yeah, Janu around January.、Um, and it goes for a couple of weeks.、Mm. And one week is East Japan, and the other week is West Japan. And you have producers from those regions coming in and basically showing you the, the best that the region has to offer. And also, there was Festival performances、mm -hmm. from the different、um, prefectures. And that was quite a spectacular thing to see. 
just such a huge venue, such a variety of, of food, and people very proud of the, the food that they were producing. Um, we managed to go to that for quite a few years. Yeah, um, just <laughs> we had to save up because you wanted mm -hmm. to try absolutely everything in there. And everything is delicious. And you spent several hours there. Yeah. Um, sit down, eat something and move on to the next <laughs> yeah. dish that you want to try. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was one that just kind of came to my my mind i'll definitely miss uh miss that the cherry blossoms you can't really live in japan for any length of time without having uh good memories of the the cherry blossom it's such a it's a time of year that people get really really excited about and um yeah we had some great afternoons sitting under the cherry trees um where we used to live there was a beautiful little uh stream not quite a river a stream um with the cherry trees going across the the stream and kids would play in the water and people would sit at the side of the the stream and eat and drink and those kind of um moments were very special um yeah i think the experience is to just be there it's not walking around the hanami trees or the cherry blossoms it's about just being there and sitting and having a little drink and a little bite to it and chatting and just just being it's quite mindful yeah this is one thing about the cherry blossom time of year is it's a moment to kind of reflect on things in a way um it's for a short period of time and you kind of have to really enjoy the the moment so it is a moment to be quite mindful it's also part of new beginnings isn't yeah. it everything starts in april and you know it starts with the hanami so everyone is in a good mood uh, mm. Looking forward to new experiences, new things, new jobs, new schools. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it just it's all part of it. And everyone has this beautiful attitude, just relaxed yeah. and happy and positive. Yeah. Okay, so we'll try to not keep this, uh, <laughs> this video too long. Um, any moments that kind of surprise you any kind of memorable moments that you can think about um, um, you know people being kind to mm. you that's always a nice surprise um i like that uh, those little moments that you connect with somebody that you don't know and you'll never see again yeah uh, but they stay in your mind and that's really nice very often it's older people yeah uh younger people maybe even you know people our age um especially in somewhere like Tokyo they they can often kind of stand back a little bit but older people are much more confident and sometimes willing to to come and um, chat to you and interact with you so I remember once we were in a small city called Kanazawa was it mm -hmm. and we were walking along it was raining it was raining quite heavily and this old woman just from her front door started shouting at us oh, i thought what have we done why why is she yeah why is she thought, upset we thought we did something wrong we were just walking um, yeah but no she was calling us she was calling us to give us an umbrella yeah. um which is very kind of her um so yeah the, these kind of little moments uh were quite special i remember the first time you came to Japan, we we went down to Kyoto, and we were in a taxi, um, just going to the the hotel from the train station. And the taxi driver was quite chatty, quite friendly, and uh, he actually gave us a little bottle of uh, green tea, made by his wife. Made by his wife, yeah. So it was um, very nice. You know, just kind of sharing those kind of um, moments. Those those are are nice kind of memories to to have um culture let's talk about culture a little bit um what have you learned in the 12 years 
What did you learn about Japanese culture that you didn't know before? Um, I don't know. The, you really live uh, and experience this idea of the group is more important than the individual. Uh, you need to be part of the group, to respect the group. And that's always maybe the most important thing. Yeah. Um, either if you're in the train, you know, don't, you know, call somebody on the phone, mm. uh, don't chat or, or don't be too loud. But if this is about the group. The group wants to be quiet. They are all working or coming from work or going to work. They're all tired. Sleeping on their way to work, yes. sleeping on their way home from work. So it's, the train. it's an understanding that it's a, it's a quiet moment for everyone, I right. think. Yeah. So, so you do, you are very mindful about how do you fit in in that group. If either if if, if it's a, a, just you and someone else, but also big groups. Yeah. And again, the train. If you're very close to each other, but you you need to try to mind and and understand everyone. So you you move in a group, really. Yeah, I think it's very clear when you are working. Mm um what the group means um so i think that's where you you really start to learn about deeper aspects of culture is when you're actually working and you're part of a group um where you work and you you think about how your actions impact um other people um and this kind of relates to the work ethic, mm. so kind of how hard people work. Um, and Japanese people do work very hard. There is a kind of stereotype that Japanese people work very hard. They certainly work very long hours. Mm -hmm. um, and this idea of group before individual, in many ways, it's work before family as well. Uh, especially for men, um, there's still a tradition where the, the man will go to work and the woman might stay at home to, to look after the kids. But the guy will work long hours um, and, you know, will we'll come home exhausted um, at the end of the day. And um, sort of putting the family after work um so that's the work ethic is a something to to kind of respect but it's also something that i think people need to think about um i think the younger generation coming through now aren't really interested in following the the patterns of of their family especially their their dad typically um who would work such long hours um and anything else about culture? Well, because it's the group uh, over the individual, you it's very clear that if you do a job, you just do it right. Mm. And it's quite inspiring, especially older generations. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, they could be planting a flower. They could be cleaning something. They could be doing something much more technical, yeah. Um, music, art, whatever it is, do it right. I think that's very true related to hobbies. Mm -hmm. One thing I always found quite interesting in Japan is people are very clear about what their thing is, what their hobby is. And whatever they choose to do, they are 100% invested and they will do it for for their whole life, possibly. Um, so they'll become real experts in whatever they've decided to, to invest their time in. So if somebody is interested in music, they will have this huge collection of, um, of albums or whatever. Um, if somebody plays golf, they play golf every moment that they have free. They're really choose something and invest um, a lot of energy. So this idea of if you do something, you do it right uh, and you go all in on it. Uh, challenges. Uh, language 
is a challenge. Um, in total, I, I lived in Japan for two, 16 years, uh, four years in Niigata and 12 years in Tokyo. And uh, language, it's a difficult thing because you, you do get better over time. If you're paying attention and, uh, and trying to learn, you do improve over time, but some days you don't feel like you know anything. Um, because you know you'll you'll go to try to to do something or talk to somebody, and that interaction will fail for whatever reason, and you just go away feeling that you've you just don't know anything. Your your Japanese is is terrible. But the reality is, it was just that moment you didn't understand that phrase or you misunderstood something. Um, but yeah, the language was was a big barrier. Um, and it's true even for people who've lived in Japan much longer than, than I have. Um, the, the language is always something you're, you're going to struggle with. Um, but also I think you learn certain phrases and language and vocabulary, grammar, and it can take you, uh, you know, it, it, it really helps um and you feel like you can do this <laughs> mm. and then there's another kind of vocabulary another kind of experience another thing other things that you need to do and and they're unavailable to you with that level of vocabulary mm. so it's it's always it always feels like it's never enough um because there's always something new to learn right it, it's not you don't have everything figured out so sometimes that also, you know, a new experience, you don't know <laughs> yeah. uh, if it's if it's going to be enough. Um, but, you know, if, if, if you have a system, um, you know, you, you can get by really well. I think there's levels yeah. to it. There's there's the level where you can go about your day. You can you buy tickets, go to restaurants. You've you've got enough Japanese to do that kind of thing. But then there's another level of Japanese, which is you're actually living there and you need to do complicated things. Um, you know, we were living there during the pandemic. We had to arrange our uh, vaccinations. Um, that's, not, that's not something you learn about in a textbook. Um, so Go anything kind of medical or taxes. tax taxes um, <laughs> that can be quite stressful. Um, I would. That's another level. Yeah. I would dread every time you get a letter from the city council, city office. Yeah, city office. I. I was like, <clears throat> oh my god! What is this? With the time you learn what it means and when they come. Yeah. At the beginning, I was always thinking, oh, my God, like, what do I need to do with this? But, yeah, yeah uh, little by little, you you learn that they come and what they mean. Yeah. Um, other challenges, the weather. Sounds like a strange thing to say, but in, in recent years, the summers in Japan have been really, really hot. Um, I think this summer was even worse than, than last summer. And... Just the intensity of the heat, but also the length of the summer. So you're getting into late September, sometimes even October, and the temperature is still really high up into the you know mid thirties or more. But this is with um, humidity. It's humid as well, yeah. So that makes it a little yeah. bit harder because you cannot really sweat. Uh, and this is where it can get quite dangerous. Well, yeah, sweating yeah doesn't help with the no. humidity. It does no. sweating doesn't cool you down. It does not. So it's it's a bit difficult, um, especially at night, mm -hmm. because you don't you don't have the same type of rest. You don't really rest. That's so true. With time, it gets you know more difficult because That's... you haven't really rested. I remember we we had been in Europe for. The summer and we came back to Tokyo and it was late August and people seemed tired. Yeah. We really kind of noticed that people were just exhausted of just 
a whole month of um of intense heat um yes. so yeah that was that's a challenge so if you're thinking about going to japan maybe the summertime is is a, a time to avoid um one challenge that i think we faced um as a couple who are not japanese is that we were often seen as tourists even though we'd lived in in japan for for over a decade uh lived in tokyo for for 12 years we would still automatically be seen as as tourists and that made it kind of difficult to access certain aspects of japanese culture so going into maybe a small restaurant or something it seemed very very stressful for the people in the restaurant because they felt that you know these tourists have just walked in they don't speak um the same language as us how are we going to get through this kind of situation or they don't know what we serve or right they don't yeah like we wouldn't understand what the food is and they're we're not going to be happy with whatever um so that was difficult at times um something we became very aware of but um yeah it feels you're always starting from zero yeah unless you're going to the same place again and again um and they know that you you live locally um and it makes sense it's it's understandable it is understandable but it's a kind of a just something that you're always having to having to deal with um so how did we grow in our time in japan um we spent our 30s pretty much our 30s that whole kind of decade of our 30s um in japan um i spent most of my adult life in japan i first went to japan when i was 25 so most of my adult life has been in Japan. Uh but yeah, our 30s were in Japan. We got married in Japan. We did. Um which was its own thing. Um <laughs> so and also I think getting married in Japan and kind of growing together in a in a third country. Okay? So we're not from the same country. Japan is a third country uh for us kind of growing together as kind of a, a married couple I think was helpful it allowed us to experience new things together um and I think that was yeah I think that was good I think we that, had to face uh, challenges together we had yeah. to figure out things together uh there weren't we had the same friends uh no family really although we had you know very good friends that were almost family well, yeah but well that's a, that's a very important point kind of not having family you can have friends and i think when you're in your 20s and people like to go out and party and and have fun your 20s are very different when you're in your 30s things kind of uh change people start to settle down their families work becomes a bit more serious um so there's definitely a change there is a change um but we went through it together so we did that kind of mm. allowed us to understand who we are together mm -hmm. as a unit and you did your phd i did my Japan. phd yeah um so that was um that was its own thing it was um so yeah, some big big moments in our lives um happened in Japan and in some ways it's difficult to know what aspect of our personalities is directly related to Japan and what aspect is about just growing older. You know, 12 years is a long time to be to be living somewhere. So and I'm sure there's a mix where you know japan has influenced us in some way but also we're just older we've kind of grown um in that sense um where should we take this lessons learned i think i i think i'm more patient um 
having lived in Japan. And the way I would explain that is I had so many opportunities, so many situations where I didn't understand something and I needed help from somebody to kind of get through a situation. And you see how people are patient with you mm -hmm. um, to kind of help you through a difficult situation. And you need to be patient too, because you need to get through it together. Um, so I definitely became more patient having gone through the experience of living in a country, a culture that was very, very different to what I knew. Um, yeah, you don't, it's, it's not, you don't, it's not for granted that people are understanding mm. what you mean or where you are or the context. And I think that's what I've learned even now in my own language is uh, people are not with you a hundred percent all the time. So you need to be very patient. You need to be very open. You need to understand where they are, even if it's this, you know, a language, your name, you know, your first language it's, and it makes things easier i think mm -hmm. in that sense i think that's something that you you you're more aware of the other person and yeah. you are much more um i don't know it easier on them like they they'll make mistakes you'll make mistakes and 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 you just need to work through them yeah you understand that people uh, people are doing their best people yeah. are people are learning people are trying um I think I also, I'm more adaptable. Um, again, it's part of being in a culture that was very, very different. You need to adapt. Um, you can't just expect everything to be the way it is in your home country. Mm. Um, you need to adapt um, a little bit. Sometimes, you know, you need to kind of find a, find a balance. Um, but life becomes a lot easier if you're willing to adapt. And at the end of the day, you have chosen to be in that country. There are certain ways that things are done. You should um, try to, to respect those um, ways. So I think, yeah, patient, adaptable. Um, understanding. Yeah, kind of understanding. Um, so yeah, some of the ways that I think we have kind of grown. Um, we talked a little bit about the language earlier um, and I think learning the language is going to help you. It's, it's undoubtedly something that you need to to think about if you move to Japan and it just opens so many doors. Um, a few words can make a big difference, a few sentences can just change an interaction completely. Completely. Um, we've seen it. We've had situations where somebody, again, thinks that we're tourists who don't speak Japanese and they maybe they, they feel like we're going to be hard work to, to deal with. But then a few words, a couple of sentences in Japanese and they just relax. They realize, oh, it's OK this is this is fine they speak japanese we can we can get through this interaction we had that on many many occasions yeah and then you can see their kindness whereas yeah to, when, to begin with when they, they don't really know how this is gonna go um they're very serious and you think oh, i'm doing something wrong but then yeah. then they open up and they you they don't require you to be perfect Mm. Uh, no, it, but it, they're yeah. a little bit more accepting, knowing that at least it's 50-50. And that, it really changes situations. Yeah. One thing that I've seen a lot on social media is lists of things that you shouldn't do if you go to Japan. So don't do this, don't do that. Long lists as though it's the law. Um, but the truth is that... Uh, you know, Japanese people are, are going to be quite forgiving in, in many situations. And they don't expect you to know the ins and outs of every cultural aspect um, of behavior uh, in Japan. You know, you, 
look around, see what other people are doing, um, and kind of respect the the places that you're in. But you you know, everyone's human, um, and you're going to try and do your do your best. But yeah, don't be put off by these videos that list fifty things that you shouldn't do um, if you're in Japan, because um, it's just not true. Um, a lot of them. Some of them are a little bit more serious than others, but these lists just seem to scare you that, you know, you'd be so stressed. And that's something I have seen. I've seen tourists who have, who are just really, really stressed because they think they need to be kind of per do everything perfectly. Um, but just relax and enjoy the, enjoy the place, smile, talk to people. Um, yeah, enjoy your enjoy your holiday. A little thank you exactly. goes a long way. Yeah, um, but yeah, try to learn a little bit about the culture. I think it it will help. But um, um, a couple of books that I thought I would recommend that I think could be quite helpful. Uh, there's one called The Japanese Mind. I think it's a little bit old now, 2002. Um, the Japanese Mind: Understanding Contemporary Japanese Culture. That was one that I read when I first went to Japan and yeah, it helps you kind of understand, especially if you're working um, and you have to interact with Japanese people regularly. Um, that was quite important for me. And um, another book called Pure Invention, which is um, how Japan made the modern world. And that's just an interesting slice of kind of pop culture in Japan. Um, I'd recommend that as well. But it's it, it goes deeper than just um, like the obvious. Uh, mm. It goes a little bit deeper and it's very interesting and very accessible, I would say. I, I, I enjoy that one. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it talks about it. history, economics uh, kind of come into it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and tips for traveling, um, if you can, try to get out into the countryside. Um, Japan is not Tokyo. Um, all of Japan, it, it, once you get out of Tokyo, you, you kind of start to see the real Japan. Um, and renting a car, it's very accessible. Um, because everything is very clear. Rules are very clear. Um, you cannot miss. Uh, r r rules, sorry. Yeah. Rules of the road, you mean? Yeah, the rules right. of the road are very clear. GPS will tell you exactly which lane you need to go on. Yeah, no, they're very, uh, very it's, good. It's, it, yeah, no, it's, I would say it's very, very easy. Driving in Tokyo can be a little bit stressful, but driving outside in the countryside, um, yeah, and just allows you to, to get up into the mountains um, and just, yeah really enjoy the country. Try a hot spring, um, an onsen as they're called. You might feel a little bit nervous about doing it because it's a very different um, aspect of the culture, but just take a deep breath and um, and enjoy it. It's, it's a very, yeah, a very unique experience. Um, and the last thing, this is something I, I say to people who come to Japan is you don't have to visit every shrine and temple in Kyoto. There's thousands of temples and shrines in, in Kyoto. Um, and if you try to go to a lot of them, um, you might end up getting quite bored. Um, go to a few, um, but then enjoy other aspects of Kyoto. Kyoto is a beautiful city. Um, it is. But you don't need to see every shrine and temple. Um, okay. So how are we doing for time? Okay. Um, so we have left Japan. This is not Japan. Um, this is... Mexico. This is Mexico. We are in Mexico City. This is Susanna's home. Um, born and bred in Mexico City. And we've been here about seven months, seven months. And um, how do you feel? How do you feel about changing from 
Japan to, to Mexico, Mexico City, Tokyo to Mexico City? It's been, um, it's been hard in some ways. It's been easier in other ways, mm. um, having family, friends. Um, it's been nice. I haven't lived here for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, not just Tokyo, I was living in the UK for a while. So I'm also a little bit new. I, like, I, I see things and I remember what's more. Uh, yeah, but the city has changed a lot. The city has changed a lot. What I find really funny is my, my, my brain works a lot when I'm driving and I'm remembering places because when i learned to drive in mexico city the, there wasn't a gps mm. so i had to learn all this road so it right. just comes back and that's it's a very okay <laughs> it's a very strange feeling i don't know how to to describe it it's readjusting to to the city and also yeah. one big difference here is driving we we drove in Japan, we drove in, in Tokyo, but uh, where we are in Mexico City, it's it's driving. We need to drive, yeah. But no. I mean, it's fine. I don't mind. I I, I got back into it quite easily, even though mm. it, it can be a bit traumatic for other people uh, driving in a city that's, you know, so full of cars. But I, I find it easy. Mm. Uh, but yeah, just finding some things difficult that okay. were very easy in Japan uh, and you miss that, you miss the food uh, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think we were ready for a change after 12 years. Um, I think we're ready to to try something different. Um, I think we were pleased with what we achieved in 12 years mm. in, in Tokyo. I think we're at a good age to to make this kind of move i think if we'd waited another 12 years then moving to mexico city might have been a bit more of a challenge i think yeah. we're still still young right yeah <laughs> still young <laughs> so yeah i think this is a, a good age to make that kind of uh change and also for me i think it's important to live in mexico to live in the country that my wife is from um, and understand the culture, develop my language ability um, and connect with family, friends. Um, so, yeah, I think there's many good reasons for us to, to move uh, to, to Mexico. One thing I would say is that Japan is very, very different now to the Japan that we arrived in mm. uh, in 2012. 2012 we arrived in Japan? Yeah. yeah. Um, in Tokyo. In 2012, Japan had 8 million tourists that year. 8 million tourists. I checked the, uh, I checked the numbers. And I think this year they might hit 32, 33 million tourists. Um, and it changes the cities and the thing is it's those tourists pre predominantly mainly are going to tokyo and kyoto and kyoto so but definitely through through to tokyo. tokyo um some people don't actually make it down to to kyoto but so that's a huge increase in the number of people visiting uh this the city and it changes the dynamic of the city um so yeah it's it's very very different to the city that we arrived in um and it's great it's great for the economy um but it's it's a lot of extra people uh, especially in the in the city center areas you know mm -hmm. the shinjuku the shibuya ginza those kind of areas um miss what are you going to miss from our our life in japan our apartment that's great we had a nice apartment very comfortable apartment near the river yeah we had a, a pheasant outside our balcony yeah so our our apartment was right next to the the river and along the river this is the the tama 
Tamagawa, the Tama River, there's many pheasant, Japanese, um, it's the national bird of Japan. It is actually. a beautiful bird. And um, certain time of, times of year, um, you could hear the, the calls of this bird. Um, so yeah, we had a, we had a nice, nice apartment, like nice location. Uh, so we definitely miss that. I miss the convenience of public transport. Like I said, we have to drive a lot um, in Mexico City. Um, it was nice to be able to just jump on a train and, and get wherever we wanted to, to go to. Um, so that's something I miss. Um, snow. Obviously, we're in, in Mexico. Mexico is not famous for snow. Uh, some parts of Japan get a lot of snow. So Niigata, where I used to live, would have meters and meters of snow uh, in the winter. Um, but I think the main thing we'll probably miss is the people. You know, there's lots of um, friends and colleagues that we we had that we will, you know, not see for a long time until we, we go back to, to Japan or maybe they come to, to Mexico to visit. Um, because the people make a place what it is. Um, and yeah, so I think the people is a, is a big part of it. So that is kind of the, the end of our podcasting about Japan. Um, so what is going to come? What's coming next, Sue? Um, we are going to be doing more video podcasts. That's something that's going to happen. Um, and we're going to start doing series. We're going to choose a topic and do a series on that topic. So the first one we've got coming in January is about travel. So we've got 12 episodes focusing on different aspects of travel, short conversations um, on these topics, and also transcripts of these um, will be available. Um, so they will be coming out in January. And we will try to choose some interesting series. Um, hopefully it's a good way to recycle vocabulary, which will help people um, learn about the, the different topics. And um, I'm sure there will be some Mexico content. Um, we will talk about our, our new life here. If that's something that people would be interested in, if you think that might be interesting, um, let us know in the comments. We're happy to, to share details of, of life here in, uh, in Mexico City. And yeah, I think the, the podcast moving towards some video content. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be good if you have some memories from Japan. Like we have so many of them. Share mm. them. Yeah, yeah, let us know if you've if you've been to Japan or you're interested in going to Japan. Um, make sure you comment below. Um, and yeah, we had a great time there. Um, and we're looking forward to new life, a new adventure here in Mexico City. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please do share this with a friend, maybe somebody who's interested in Japan. And also, if you haven't watched our content about Japan, we have a lot of podcasts, 41 episodes, I think, we made about our life in Japan. Um, so go back and check those out. Thanks for watching and we will see you very, very soon.